it does like an emotional thing to you. I feel the same way about the little, what reminds me of like a Nintendo DS or something, which is this like arpeggiated oh, I this. organ. I love this. I think this does so much for but the it song. It plays so quietly. It just kind of peeks it's... out when the vocal goes away. It sounds fake. Oh, sounds like it a toy. It makes barf. It's like so <laughs> sentimental feeling. I really wanted the whole thing to sound like Animal Crossing. I yeah, think that see? was a big... I am Billie Eilish. I'm Phineas. And we are going to be showing you how we made the song, What Was I Made For? It was one of the, the, the fastest songs we've ever written. Once we got that first verse and that line, just what was I made for? I think we were both like, <laughs> it was a good vibe. And it was honestly like a half hour that it took to do that. <laughs> This is like one of four cases total in our career where we've made something and to then kind of submit to people. It's a different way of making music because- it, You're I think, auditioning. Yeah, you're, you're it's auditioning. definitely an audition. And all we had was a voice memo. Our main concern was we can't send them this voice memo because it was, it was rough, but, but there was, was something enough. about it that was cool. It was pretty special. I used to know, but I It is top three hardest songs I've ever had to record. It's not even that it's high. It is high in my range, but it's not about that. It's about the delivery. I was trying to do a very specific thing with my voice, which was this like very soft held back, you know, upper range falsetto, where as I could have you know, I could have belted it, I could have sung it more out, I could have sung it in like more of a choral, like choir type, da 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 da, and instead it was like a da 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 da, I used to float. It's really hard to do. Like, honestly, it's really hard to do. It's really hard to sound good and be enunciating the um, words correctly and, and enough. Having... I remember that being a big, part of the song was making sure that it was intelligible. I wanted you to understand what I was saying. Could have literally done like a, I used to float and now I, but I was not, that's not what the song wanted, you know? And I could have gone, I used to float. I, there's so many ways I could have sung it, but none of it worked the way that this kind of heartbroken, almost like you were just crying and now you're singing delivery was. And it was the hardest choice of all of the choices I could have made. I had this, this exact vision for what I wanted it to sound like, and I, I got it there, and I feel really proud. I think it's one of the best, if I can be honest I've, and, and self whatever, I feel like it's one of my best vocal performances I've ever given. But you were harsh about it. She would, she, we'd, we'd do the whole vocal and comp it, and we'd be working on the production. She'd go home for the night, and she'd come back the next day, and she'd be like, I need to re-record this line, this line, and this line. Yeah. When I was starting out, I had one way of singing, and that's how I sang. And everything that I sang, I just sang it how I knew how to sing it, and now, I have all these choices and I can play with my like instrument. Like I have an instrument now that I can play with and it's really amazing and it's really, it's really fun, but it's definitely hard. And I would say that I don't know how to feel was brutal. Cause it goes, it does that like, you know, uh, ascending. Cause I, cause I, I don't know how to feel. And it's so high and you're kind of sliding at the note. What is the key? Play it for a second. C. Uh, yeah. That how, how, oh, oh, you guys, I must have done that shit like a gazillion times. I don't know. And the how, do, oh my gosh. I'm so glad it's over. I'm so <laughs> glad I recorded it and I don't have to record it again. The run was definitely tough. I think it was tough because it's in head voice. And for me, runs are much easier in kind of a lower register in a, in a, in like a mid chest voice. That was the one that came to me initially and I really wanted to do it, but I was like, I don't know if I can get this one. The second chorus was belted for a while and that run was belted and it just didn't sound right. It just was like, eh, this isn't what this is it's supposed to be. But of course it's much easier to do that. I was like, oh God, I have to do the soft. 
you know. Cause I, cause I... Okay. Nice, dude. I think I'm good. That run, it's intricate. It, what is it? Cause I, cause I, cause I, I don't It's fast, know. it's soft, it's back here, I'm, it's not forward. Billy's ability to double track is really amazing. There's like micro rhythms when you're double tracking of where each syllable and pitch ends and begins on the lead vocal that you've tracked. And oftentimes, especially the way that Billy sings is a little jazzy. So oftentimes her delivery is behind the beat or rushing and then it's behind the beat. It's very purposeful. It is, but, it's, so but it's hard to uh, double. hard to double. It's, double. it's hard to replicate. If you sing in a very sort of like common time, all the notes start on the downbeat, that's much easier to double. And she's doing really jazzy, intricate stuff. To even double that is really challenging and she'll just go after it and, and crush that. And then she's able to do it when she harmonizes too. And she's got a big range. I don't know how to feel. And that's playing at the same time Can as the lead. Can you play it with a lead though? I don't know how to feel. So even her vibrato is I try on to the match same it all up. rhythm as the breaths the, are all matched up. The vibrato is all matched up. I don't know how to feel. So that's three takes at once. This is just the lead. That yeah. line you can barely hear it. You can kind of just feel it in the imaging of it. And there's a plugin called Vocal Line that will analyze a waveform and and stretch it and and contract it. And I've never used it once with Billy. I, I don't know how to feel. I think of sound in a very physical way. I think that sound has a weight to it. And I think that a perfect production is like a perfectly balanced set of scales. I'm just trying to keep the equilibrium. And I feel like generally I can feel innately when something is tipping the scale and sort of ruining the balance of everything. And it is, it is all sort of like placing things really delicately and making sure that it holds and then if it holds maybe adding something else but oftentimes especially from a stereo perspective it's like if something's going on over here something's going on over here so that it balances i've gone on record as saying this but like the fantasy is that your vocal is unbelievable and the one instrument playing along to it the piano or the guitar is great and that it's you know you're like bob dylan and it's just that the art of production to me is just to enhance the emotionality it isn't to gild a lily or something. So we just tried to be inventive and add to the sort of narrative components of it. One of my favorite components of the production on this, I've spent a lot of time just handing Billy some instrument that's in my studio because oh, yeah. I'm more interested in what she's going to do experimenting with it. She has less years of standing, you know, behind a keyboard on a stage than I do. I don't really know what I'm doing. And that's exciting. As a producer, the idea that they're going to come up with is so much less theoretical and I love that. And so I have this toy, this little keyboard that Custom Vintage gave me. It's literally like yellow, it's like toy colored yellow and red, like yeah. as if it was from Toys R Us. We had a patch on it and yeah. I just was like fucking around. And I ran it through uh, a plugin called Sketch Cassette that I love Sketch that cassette. that just fucked up the sound more, which made it feel really good. But she's mainly playing along to the melodies and it is so sad. Like, sorry. That's so sad. <laughs> sorry. Wait, keep it. And here's how it's interacting with the lead. When it comes to production and recording instrumental parts, I'm much more interested in the first pass and the sort of guesswork that goes into that. I'd much less like to have her sort of sit there for hours and figure out exactly what she wants to play for the verse. Yeah, the first I want it to be kind cool. of improvisational. Mm -hmm. Play the um, like ending of that one. Just the outro? Yeah. And it fades out. Can't be something I wait for. 
but it, it, I had to boost it so much to even have you hear it just now. Yeah, it's it's so quiet in the mix. Also underneath it are a bunch of ad libs that she did, but they're so berry. Ad libs. Oh my the God, I could person. do a whole interview about ad libs. <laughs> Nobody ever asks me about ad libs. They make songs so special. You don't even know, dude. But they're that quiet. They're so... This one? And again, under the lead. I don't know how to feel. Ah, I love that one. I don't know how to feel. Feel. With some love it. Oh, it makes me so excited. I had this idea for the the one on the second half of the first verse when it says taking a drive. I love that this is here. Taking a drive. I just wanted it to have this weird kind of euphoric thing happening. So I, I said, whoa, <laughs> and I recorded that. Do you want to hear what it sounds like with no plugins? Woo! <laughs> I forgot. And then I ran it through an overdrive and a channel EQ and a reverb plugin. It sounds like this. And then I turned it way down and it plays at the same time as a big thumpy um, drum, a drum hitting and also a bass starting and the, the three of them together. It does like an emotional thing to you. I feel the same way about the little, uh, what reminds me of like a Nintendo DS or something, which is this like arpeggiated oh, I love this. organ. I love this. I think this does so much for but the it song. It plays so quietly. It just kind of peeks it's, out when the vocal goes away. It's so nostalgic to me. It sounds, it's nostalgic. It sounds like a. It sounds fake. Uh, it sounds like it a makes toy. Me want to barf. It's like so <laughs> sentimental. Also, a bunch of uh, Mellotron patches. It reminds me of like Sims. I really wanted the whole thing to sound like Animal Crossing. I yeah, think that was see? a big. There's some really, really distant, huge guitars. It's so cool. I love that that's hidden underneath. It's so funny producing music because when you record something like that, you inherently have to record it super loud because part of the <laughs> way that a guitar sounds is the feedback. You have to record it loud enough that the speaker, the pickup on the guitar is picking up the noise from the speaker. So you're like, you're playing your normal song and you're destroying your song with this like, you know, butt rock guitar part. And you know, as a producer that you're like, I'm going to chuck it as far in the background as humanly well, possible. No one would ever like think that that's in but there. It adds it adds energy. so much, yeah. There's just energy that that's providing. Um, and that's sort of the, again, that's like the physics of it. Of like, it would never sit in that song if we had it, you know, super loud. Yeah. When we were writing this, we were very, very much writing about, you know, a character. And we were writing from the perspective of a character and her life and the way she sees the world through her eyes and her experiences. And it wasn't until like two days later that I was listening to it and I was like, this is me. This is my life and how I feel. And it was pretty weird to like not realize that my subconscious was doing that. And, and also just that I related a lot to this character. I think it's an excuse to be a little braver than you might be willing if you are writing something that you know people are going to receive as autobiographical. So true. I think if you write a lyric like, I'm sad again, don't tell my boyfriend and you know your boyfriend is gonna hear it and think, Jesus Christ, that takes a different amount of courage than being like, this oh, Barbie. Not about you. No, it's literally not about you. Yeah, yeah no, it's a character. Yeah. That's what I was, I was hitting that the next day. I'm sad again, don't tell my boyfriend, it's not what he's made for. When we were with Greta, and we saw the, the first, first time. 35, 40 minutes straight. That was edited at the time. And then we saw sort of moments, key moments that she wanted us to see. And we, sh we were shown what at the time was the scene that the song ends up in, which is the, the now feel scene, which made me cry oh, yeah. watching that. And oh. at the time had no uh, Music. montage. Oh yeah, no montage. Had no life montage, which I later found out is like footage of the crew and cast's family members, mm -hmm. which is beautiful. But at the time it was just a one shot of Margot just crying. crying. In this like white room. But we loved that moment in that line. And she had sort of said we're missing what she was referring to as Barbie's heart song. Yeah. So we had all that. 
in the back of our minds when we went into right that pressure like almost doesn't exist when it's just us two you know in the studio in his house like you know we're we're eating like donuts and like making music and playing pickleball and stuff it's just like the pressure of of whoever the fat suits are i don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah how do i quiet the noise i'm not really listening Really this is listening. this is the, not, the team can not attest. To, not to throw Billy under the bus, but you, you're asking how she quiets the noise, and Billy's like, "What's going? Who's what's going? I don't, who's, I don't know what the hell is there, going on. I'm I have I very little noise gets in there. I have <laughs> I have one thousand four hundred and sixty one unread texts right now. I'm not looking at that stuff. I never really questioned the song. I was like, is that is that enough of a chorus? Just like repeating, cause I, cause I, I don't know how to feel. I just was like, don't know how to feel. Like, am I saying enough? Like, does that convey what I mean? And I think that it so did. I was just nervous that it wasn't, you know, saying enough, but in a way it was like saying way enough. You know, it, it was really the perfect, like simple way to be like, I don't know what I'm doing. You know, I don't know how to feel, I don't. And I think that it's, that's kind of one of the most special parts of the song is just this like simple like statement that somebody could just say, I've said that, I've said that before in my life. I think all of us have probably been like, I don't know how to feel. And literally that she doesn't know how to feel like physically. We made the song early enough in the um, process of them scoring the film that after we'd written the song, they started using the melodies that we'd written for the song in the film score. And so there'd be scenes where there's an orchestra playing the melodies that are in the song in the film, kind of full circle, the the orchestra that they'd recorded of the melodies of our song that they'd put in the movie. I was like, well, why do, can we get a pass of, of the orchestra playing just sort of chords underneath um, the song so that it sort of ties all into the film score. This is like a breakout of like the orchestra stems. It's like a million microphones, but there's some horns. Mark or Andrew, who was his uh, composing partner, he sent over like, like four tracks. He sent over like strings, horns, CS80, harp. One of my favorite parts that he added is the ascending harp. Oh, every time it hits it, dee, 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 dee. oh moment. my God, it just, it's really, I love that. The song means a lot to me. It means a lot to me. I think that it's hard to like listen to, I think. There's some things in this world that don't, like they kind of don't stay yours, especially when they are consumed by the public and things like that. And I think that this song, no matter what happens with it, I think it'll always f be mine and I'll feel like it's right here because it is for me. I think it's just about changing. And I think when you grow and when you change, it's sort of inherently an identity crisis that sort of metamorphosis as a person, which is like the most cathartic, important part of living your life and aging is also this like devastating experience and can really put you in crisis. Growing yeah. up is scary. Yeah, and growing up doesn't stop when you turn 18 or reach the height that you're gonna be for the rest of your life. Growing up is just lived experience continuing to wash over you like waves on a beach until you're worn smooth like beach glass and then you die. Um, <laughs> Jesus Christ. And uh, that's fine. <laughs>